Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford. I'm back with another video about a topic in Norse language and myth, and today I want to talk about a very famous passage from the Poetic Edda, specifically from the poem Sigurdrivamol. The corpus of Old Norse myth, as preserved in our best sources like the Poetic Edda, the Prose Edda, and certain sagas, consists virtually entirely of narratives, stories about the gods or about the mythical heroes, there is almost nothing left of what you could call truly religious material. There are no instructions about how to conduct rituals. There are uh, virtually no texts that we could call prayers. There's really nothing directed at the gods. What we have that survives are just the stories about the gods. This shouldn't surprise us too much because, of course, the traditions about these myths survived in oral transmission from about the time when Iceland was converted to Christianity in the year 1000 to the time when the texts were actually being written down in the 1200s. So it's Christian hands that are writing these myths down for us, even though they probably do survive from myths that were told orally several centuries before. And if you consider the way that, say, the Greek myths are passed down today, it's not as if we, it's any different, right? I mean, if a parent is reading their kid uh, from the big book of Greek myths or something at night, that kid is likely to, you know, learn some stories about Zeus changing shape, hopefully not too many stories about Zeus changing shape because those get pretty adults only, uh, stories about the Trojan War, that kind of thing, but the kid is unlikely to learn and the parent is unlikely to teach or even care about or, or know about anything like a prayer or a ritual involving Zeus. And so the antiquarian interest that Christians in Iceland showed in the 1200s about the myths of their, uh, their pre-Christian ancestors does not equate to interest in the religion of their pre-Christian ancestors because these were Christians who already had their religion and weren't interested in changing it. So it is rare and special whenever a piece of this literature actually does seem to be addressed from a human being to a god or gods. There are a couple places where we seem to have something like a hymn to Thor uh, you smash so-and-so's skull, you smash so-and-so's skull, etc. Uh, but probably the most memorable and most uh, general and applicability of all of these passages that could be called something like a prayer or hymn is in the poem Sigurdrivamol and the Poetic Edda. So the Poetic Edda is just a compilation. It's not the work of one person. The different poems were composed at different times and different places some of the many centuries before this particular manuscript was written down in the 1270s, or about the 1270s. The poem Sigurd Rivamol is one of three poems that it's actually hard to draw a definite line between uh, that discuss the hero Sigurd in his youth. In Sigurd Rivamol, he rides through a burning ring of fire and he finds a Valkyrie asleep inside. He cuts off her armor and she tells him that she has been cursed because she disobeyed Odin and killed the wrong man in a battle. Now, in the poem, in the Poetic Edda, she is called Sigurdriva, Victory Driver. But in the saga of the Volsungs, which is based largely on these poems, she is said to have been Brynhildr, uh, who appears to be a different Valkyrie in the poems of the Poetic Edda. Not that all the poems agree on everything. After she has woken up and asked him who he is and given him a drink, she says in stanzas three to four what is often called a prayer. And I'll read this for you first in Old Norse, uh, stanza by stanza, and then with the English translation of the stanza from my translation of the Poetic Edda. And uh, keep in mind that the pronunciation that I'm using is reconstructed Old Norse pronunciation. So stanza three, Hail dagr, hailir dag sinir, hail not, Och nift, o reidum augum litid okr thini, och gevid setjondum sigur. Hail the day, hail the sons of day, hail to night and her sister. Look on the two of us here with friendly eyes and give us victory. So the first half of this, which is a poem in the Old Norse meter called Ljodahotr, is a little hard to understand. Uh, who are the sons of day? Are those human beings for being awake during the day? I'm not aware of any myth that, that talks about sons of day. 
and I'm not sure who the sister of night should be. I don't believe that's explained anywhere in uh, our Old Norse texts. Notice in the second half that I translate that, look on the two of us here. The word used for two, for us, okr, specifically means two people. If it were more than two, it would be us, which of course looks more like the English word us. This word okr is what gives us the modern Icelandic word for us, okr. But in Old Norse, it's specifically just two of us, two people. And of course, she means the Valkyrie herself and Sigurdr, the hero who's broken her out of her cursed sleep. In Sansa 4, she goes on to say, Heilir Asir, Heilar Osenjur, Heil Sjö in Fjölnita Fold, Mol och Manvit givet okr marum tvein, och laknis hender medan livum. Hail the gods, hail the goddesses, hail the hospitable earth. Give the two of us eloquent speech and wisdom and healing hands while we live. Asir, of course, is the family of gods that includes Odin, Tyr, and Thor. It can be used to include all the gods. Olsen the order is just the feminine form, so the goddesses. And the word for us, again, is the, the dual form, so the two of us, Okr, not all of us, Os, because she's speaking for two. And notice, it's interesting, she asked for mol ok manvit. Mol is words, speech, especially eloquent words of speech. We also see this in the names of several poems in the Vorgeta, including Hovamol, the words of the High One, and of course Sigurdrivamol itself, the words of Sigurdriva. Manvit is literally man wit or person wit. The word for man is masculine gender, but can mean a person of any, of, of any sex. It's just the general word for human being. Uh, so this is wisdom, practical wisdom for life on earth. And also laknis hender, the hands of a healer, laknir meaning healer. And of course, in modern Icelandic, the descendant form of that laknir means doctor, a good vocabulary item if you're uh, stuck in Reykjavik with an emergency. So this is a very intriguing uh, section of this poem and it's proven impossible for scholars to agree on a date. Often these three poems about Sigurdr that this comes in uh, sequence with, uh, Regens Mol, Fóldnes Mol, and Sigurdriva Mol, are considered fairly late. Uh, that doesn't mean that every single part of those poems is late because of course uh, there's a fairly good argument that these three poems are pieced together from earlier pieces of other poems and um, this little piece could be very early, could be very late. There's really nothing about the language to say one way or another uh, that I that I can see. So it's an interesting piece. It certainly has inspired a lot of uh, speculation and use today among people who are interested in the pre-Christian Norse religion. And uh, it stands as really one of the most unique little bits of poetry in Old Norse because it's not about dialogue between two people or two gods. It's not a story about a god or a hero. It actually is someone directly addressing heavenly powers. For my translation of this poem, as well as the rest of the poems of the Poetic Edda, check out my translation of the Poetic Edda, which came out in 2015. This is the first translation by a living scholar into a, uh, a normal English. I'm not trying to make it sound archaic. I also have recently translated the Saga of the Volsungs together with the Saga of Ragnar Lothbrok. The Saga of the Volsungs tells more fully the story of the hero Sigurdr and the Valkyrie Brynhildr. And I have many other videos on this channel about topics in Norse language and myth, uh, including about the poems of the Poetic Edda, the gods of the Norse, and a lot of videos about the Old Norse language itself and its relation to other languages. So I hope you'll check those out and check out my Patreon if you haven't yet. My Patreon page helps me keep making these videos for free. And for now, I'll wish you all the very best.